Hey guys, welcome back to How to Build a Blog with Laravel. This is part number 14, and in this video, we're gonna finish up CRUD by working on the R, read, all right? So in the previous video, we had our CRUD, uh, we started our CRUD and we worked with um, the create, which is the first part of CRUD, the C. And now it's time to move on over to the R, the read, and we're gonna um, show you how to pull items from the database and display them to the user in kind of a static format. That's what this video is all about. I'll see you in a second. So in the previous video, like I said, we worked on CRUD, we started our CRUD, we worked on create, and now it's time to work on the next thing, which is read. We want to be able to display a post to the user so they can see what the, the post looks like or, or what's in the post, okay? And um, in order to do this, let's start by just obviously opening up our application. So um, make sure make sure that you're... Um, you're in your Laravel project, which I am not, so I'm gonna go ahead, just CD into where my project is, which happens to be in the po in the sites. Um, so I'm here in my Laravel project. We're gonna open this up in Sublime, or any text editor that you would like, and um, go ahead and get started. Now, because we're gonna display a single post, let's first look at the URL that that post is going to display to. Now, in order to do that, let's go back to our um, terminal. Once again, make sure that with all these commands, you're not running the server. Um, if you have any questions on that, I addressed this in pretty good detail in the previous video called FAQs, not part 13, but there was another video called FAQs, which is frequently asked questions. And we talked about how a lot of people are having problems with um, the server, PHP Artisan Serve. And in order to basically solve that problem, you need to not be running MAMP or WAMP or XAMPP, just run PHP Artisan Serve and also make sure that you're running it in a different window or a different tab, or that it's closed. One of those three things, a different window, different tab, or it needs to be just shut down when you're running any other terminal command, because when you run PHP Artisan Serve, nothing else will work. Okay, so now we're in our blogs, and let's go ahead and list all of the routes that are available to us, okay? We should, we've already seen this a few times, so but let's go ahead and do it again. PHP Artisan Route List, like this displays all of our routes. You might need to, if you're, if it looks funky like that, just extend your window and it'll look good, okay? Um, all right, so when we created our resource for post, all of these URLs were created for us already, okay? So we have um, our, we actually have where we can display all of our posts as an index. We already worked on the create and the store, so we got both of these done, and both of these together make up our create for CRUD. We needed post.create in order to show a form that the user can fill out, and then the user would want to submit that, and that's handled under post.store. So that's basically what we created up to this point. Now for the read of CRUD, we also what we're going to need to work on is post.show, and this displays a single blog post to the user in a static format so they can basically look at it or read it or see what it is and investigate it. There's another type of read that we'll work on in the next video, which is index. And that's where post.index comes in. This is another function inside um, that's part of the read group of um, functions inside of uh, CRUD. So we have got create and then read. And um, post.index is also something that you'll use for read. And it just basically displays all of the posts, maybe in like an abbreviated format, but allows you to see all the posts that are available to you as a user. But for right now, we're gonna focus on post.show. Now, what is the URL for post.show? If we take a look at that here, you can see that it obviously is expecting a get request, and so that's what this is right here. And then the URL is going, it's getting to is posts slash, and then this curly brackets posts. Now, I have talked about this before, but these curly brackets are actually variable data. So this is actually could be anything but whatever it is, we want to pass this in to the function, this post.show, um, as actual data. But we don't know what it will, what this item will be. And so that's what these brackets are, is just basically to represent variable data in the URL. Now what we're going to want it to be is post slash and then the ID for something in the um, uh, post slash the ID number, which is going to be the primary ID for a post. 
then we're gonna to wanna to find the, uh, the post by that ID number that is passed in to the URL and then display that to the user. So how do we get this, this variable, how do we access this variable in our project? Let's take a look. Well, first thing, let's kinda of come on over to our post controller. If we go under, in our blog application, we go under apps and then HTTP and then controllers. We've got our post controller, let's take a look at it. You can see we've already created all the functions here. We've finished our create, we've finished our store, and we started working on show. And again, for those of you guys in from the watch part 13, hopefully you have, if you haven't, go back and watch it. Um, but part 13, we actually created a basic view for show, but that's all we did. And we wanted to be able to display success and error messages to a user, and that's why we created the, um, uh, the view for show, because if this is successful up here, if we successfully create and store a post, then we wanna to redirect to show the post that we just created. And so we just created a basically a blank view in here. But we're gonna go ahead and finish this process up. Now earlier, right, we talked about how in our URLs, we wanted to access this variable data, right? Well, that variable data is passed in via a parameter to our show function. So that's what this dollar sign ID is. If you go up, you can notice that, for example, create and index don't pass in anything um, because they don't really need anything to operate, so we don't pass anything in. However, this ID is passed in um, from the route and um, it's going to basically represent whatever is in after this post slash and then whatever comes after that will represent by the ID. Okay, so we wanna find the post by this ID number and then pass it to the view so that we can display it to the users. So let's go ahead and start that. So we've already passing in our, we already got our view, but we don't have any data to pass into it, and we need to find the item in the database. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and create a new variable called post, and we can call this anything we want, but because it's gonna represent a post, a specific post, we're just gonna call it post. Makes it easy. We're gonna set that equal to our model. And we're gonna, so we're gonna, we don't need to do new because it's already, um, it's not a new model. We're calling a function on the existing model. So we're gonna call post dot, or not dot, um, find, just like this. So post find is a special little um, helper method. And let's take, a, if we take a look over at the Laravel documentation, which I've got pulled up here, and I also have, um, uh, I'll have this linked in the description below if you want to take a look at it yourself. We can learn about something called Eloquent. And Eloquent is a way, a really convenient way to work with our database. And when we created our model, we inherited all of these Eloquent functions to make it super easy to work with our data. So instead of having to write raw SQL code like we had to in the past and do PDO requests and stuff like that, if you've, if you've done SQL with uh, PHP before, you'll know what I'm talking about. We don't have to do any of that. We don't have to protect against security um, malfunctions. We don't have to do anything. It's all handled under this Eloquent, which makes our lives super easy, okay? So Eloquent provides a ton of helpful things for us. Um, if we scroll down, we can see what some of them are. Um, for example, um, let's see here. Here's a good example of kind of some of the ways that we can do this. We can create constraints for a SQL request um, by just calling our flight object and doing where an item is active, we want to order it by the name in descending order and just take 10 of them. And you can see how we don't have to write any SQL code. This is all PHP, but Eloquid makes it super easy to basically build up SQL requests um, using just PHP. So we're going to learn a special one today if we come back over to our project. We're gonna learn about a special one today called find. And find is kind of like the where command, except that it's designed to find an item by a primary ID, okay? The only thing it does is primary IDs. You can't find by anything other than the primary IDs. We don't have to do anything else. We can just do find. It's a super shortcut way of finding an item by a primary ID. All we need to do is pass in the ID number for the item. And we will have that from the URL it's passed in under this dollar sign ID. So all we need to do is do dollar sign ID and then we can find an item by the ID that's passed in through the URL. Okay, it's gonna store all of that in this variable called post. Let's go ahead and just put a semicolon at the end to save that. And now we need to take that post object which should have all the, the information from the database row 
Um, it should all our database row in there, and we're going to pass that into the view. You should remember we should know how to do this because we've talked about it before. But if you don't remember, we can do the with command. And if we do the with command, you can give it a name that you want to access it in the um, in the view, and then you pass in what the item is. So in this case, post, and that represents this. So what it's going to do is it's going to um, render the view and it's going to pass in a variable called post and it's going to make it set that the variable in the view equal to our post that we have right here which should be equal to the database all right now i like to use a shortcut for this which is basically to just pass in the item and then we can do with post like this and now it's going to do the exact same thing we just did but it's kind of a shortcut for doing that okay so now we're expecting in our view, we should have access to all the information that we just did with our find request. Let's go ahead and save this and open up our view to um, start working on it. So obviously views, you know, are down in resources, views, and then um, posts, and finally show. Now this is what we worked on in the previous video, part 13. And um, we just created a generic, it says this is my blog post right here. And we wanted to basically just create a skeleton of a, of a view. So there's nothing else really here right now. We're gonna go ahead and just create this and make it really simple. We're gonna have a title for our blog post. We're gonna make that an H1 tag. And then we wanna display the title to the user in this H1 tag. We want that equal to the database, obviously. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna wanna access well, first of all, we're gonna be rendering some PHP. So we need to use blade, and we're gonna to wanna to echo out this to the user. So we use our double brackets, okay? Double brackets echo out the data, and bracket, exclamation point, exclamation point, or bang, bang, they call that. Um, bracket, bracket, bang, bang is the way to um, not echo out the data, like this. That's bracket, bang, bang. So um, if we don't wanna echo out the data, but in this case, we do. Um, I, I, I just got a mess kind of happening here. <laughs> okay, so we're echoing out the data, and we just want this H1 to be equal to the value of our title item in the database. So if we access our post variable, because we passed it in, we can then access the parameters of um, post, the values that post has within it, and set it equal to title. Because title is the name of a column in our database, we're basically saying set the H1 equal to the value of the title column. That's all we're saying right here. Okay, so that should be the title of our post. And then for our blog post, what we can do is we can just set it equal to, again, do bracket bracket for, because we want to echo out the data, but we want this set to post body because the value of the body column is what we want inside of here. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's make sure our server is running. I'm going to open up a new tab so that we can um, have the server running in the background. We'll do PHP artisan serve. Make sure that you're inside of your project, your Laravel project, and then click enter. Um, we've got our development server running. So let's head on over to our project, refresh. It looks like it's running. And now let's go to our po a single post. Now in order to do that, because we haven't created navigation yet, we have to manually type in the URL. So we're gonna, we're gonna do posts slash and then um, uh, we're going to give it just we're going to pass in a single um, I, item ID. So we're going to do one. And you can see here that it says our first blog post. This is the body of our very first blog post. We're super excited to learn Laravel today. So there we go. We've got our blog post. We're showing a specific blog post already. And it's pulling that dynamically from the database. So if we pass in post two, we should get the second item in our database. Post three will pull whatever the primary ID for three is and so forth. Okay, so as you add items to your database, you should already, um, uh, it, it'll automatically have all these pages available for you because this is basically creating a page dynamically. Last thing I wanna show you is we're gonna go ahead now and create a new blog post and I'm gonna give it to um, this, we finished part 14. This was the video about, oh, how's that show? So I'm creating a new blog post here, create new post, and um, this will be our most recent blog post. And because when we create a new blog post, remember that it submits to post.show with a success error. So when we create this, it should show us the post we just barely created. So click create post. You can see that it was successful and 
you can see now that we've it's actually displaying our posts. So we're moving right along. Now what the, I wanna do in the next video is basically continue working on this page and we're gonna pull in the date and do a few other little changes just to make this page a little more robust. And then we're gonna work on the index action. Okay guys, see you in the next video.